And Angela, Lindsay, Todd, you can take us away. Okay, thanks, Jake. Um, hi, everyone. Thank you so much for coming tonight to this informational session. As Jake mentioned, I'm Angela McQuillan, and I'm the curator at the Science Center. Um, I'm here with Todd Bressy and Lindsay Rosenberg from the Mural Arts Program in Philadelphia. So first, I just want to quickly go through what the Science Center is. Um, so we're a nonprofit organization um, in, in University City, and our mission is to commercialize promising technology, cultivate talent, and convene people to inspire action. Um, so the Science Center is part of U City Square. Um, it's not just the Science Center, it also includes Wexford and Ventos, and the three companies own real estate on the campus and work together. Um, and I also want to bring attention to the three pillars of programming at the Science Center to tell you what we um, what we do here and what the Science Center is. So here's a map um, of all the buildings that make up U City Square. The blue ones are buildings that currently exist and the yellow ones are buildings that are planned. And um, you can see at the bottom we have Innovation Plaza and an arrow pointing to that little walkway that is where the mural is planned to be. So here's just a close up. So it's right, um, right off of Market Street on 37th Street. Um, so we have a lot of successful large businesses on our campus that were incubated here, Invisible Sentinel, Spark Therapeutics, Amicus Therapeutics. Um, these are mostly biotech companies. We also have three different kinds of programming, um, commercialization, convening, and cultivation. So um, our commercialization programs um, are designed to fill in the gaps in resources and connect the dots for founders, enabling companies and technologies to realize their full potential. Um, these are all of the different types of businesses that happen at the Science Center. I'm just gonna to touch on this briefly. We have a QED program, which is a proof of concept program for businesses starting up and it, we offer funding. Um, IC3401 is a startup incubator for um, biotech and, and tech companies. Launch Lane is a business accelerator that aims to reduce bias um, in the workplace. Um, it focuses on representing communities um, that are under underrepresented, and it's it's over fifty percent women and minority funded businesses. And then we also have a global soft landing accelerator that helps businesses establish a global presence. Um, so our convening program um, brings people together to generate new theories and solutions, and exposes our community to places, peoples, and people and bright ideas radiating creative energy. So that's kind of where I guess the mural um, community outreach would fall. So we first we have Quorum. This is an event space. Um, it also has a drop-in lounge. It has signature programs. Um, it's a, it's a, a workspace and we have over 600 events and 26,000 visitors since um, January, 2019. We also have Venture Cafe, which is every Thursday, which is what you're here for now. Um, during the pandemic, it's virtual, but when we're not in a pandemic, it's in person every Thursday. We also have a pretty vibrant art program. Um, I run the Esther Klein Gallery, which is a gallery that explores the intersection between science, technology, and art. We also have a bio art residency in collaboration with the biotech company Integral Molecular, um, where we put artists in the lab for three months to come up with um, new biology related projects. And we also have a lot of um, public art pieces on our campus that resulted from the percent for art program for each of our new construction. We also um, have a cultivation program. Um, it's mostly um, prepare students and adults for STEM careers. So we have firsthand, it's a youth program. It's middle school and high school students. Um, and we have a whole floor dedicated to these students with classrooms, labs, and all kinds of really cool technology like a maker space and digital tools and everything, 3D printer, um, all of that. And then we also have a workforce development team that connects um, West Philly residents to family sustaining STEM jobs. And a lot of them don't have science degrees or backgrounds, so it's a way to get everyone involved. Um, so Innovation Plaza is a park. Um, it has 
paintings, chess, checkers, free Wi-Fi, lots of seating options, and um, it has a you know a high energy. Lots of people gathering there, eating lunch, walking, having events. Um, it's in that um, on that 37th Street walkway between Market and Chestnut Street, and um, oops, that's a picture of it. Ah, so actually, yeah. So this is where the mural is going to be, and you can see. Um, I think this was actually a special event, but there's lots of people that gather there and sit there all day and all night. Um, and then here we have the Innovators Walk of Fame, which is right next to where the mural is going to be. And it basically honors um, innovators from the Philadelphia region. So um, I don't know, there's awards for science, technology, engineering, art, math, a corporate STEAM champion, medicine, community engagement, and social impact. So these awards are updated every two years and you can check our website for a full list of the honorees. But a few examples are Buckminster Fuller, Britain Chance, the women of ENIAC and Michael Solomonov. And then here is the location for the mural we're proposing with um, the Innovators Walk of Fame right underneath as you can see. So now I'm gonna hand it off to Todd. <clears throat> All right, hello everyone. Welcome uh, from Mural Arts and um, thank you uh, Venture Cafe and Science Center for hosting, for hosting this um, and um, for that great introduction, Angela. Um, I'm just, I'm gonna give a quick, very quick overview of, of how you can apply. Um, I see there's two artists, uh, I guess, on the call right now. Have both of you, do both of you have the RFQ? Yes. So, okay, Scott, do you have the RFQ? No? Okay. You can download that. So that's number one to apply. Download the RFQ. <laughs> you can get it from the uh, Mural Arts webpage, the Artist Opportunities webpage, or if that's not working for you, uh, you can um, e uh, email. Lindsay, what's the address? U City Square. Uh, hang on. Well, we'll give you the address. You can email in just a minute. Okay. I'll put it into the chat. Okay, we'll put it in the chat, the email you can. So that's how you can access the RF. So this is a request um, for qualifications. We're not asking artists to uh, submit proposals. We're just asking for you to submit background about yourself. Um, and what we will be looking for is your resume, um, a statement about your artistic practice, your artistic work. Uh, two references who can speak to your creative work. Um, we, we want that to be flexible. If you have exhibitions, if you have commissions like uh, established artists might, that's fine. You can submit that kind of uh, uh, reference or if you have other kinds of creative practices and other people who can speak to them, um, that's fine also. And then um, 10 images of your work with a list that identifies them. Um, as much as possible, sending this all in separate files helps us a lot because then we can put it together in the way we need to. So that, that is the core uh, um, of your qualifications. Since we have a small group, I'll just stop there. Do you have any questions about that? It's a pretty standard uh, set of materials. So do, you, do either of you have any questions about that? Okay. Nope. All good. Okay, next slide. Oh, I have a question. I'm Lisa. Sorry, I wasn't able to start. Oh, Lisa, with you. No, I'm sorry, I didn't see you. I'm also an artist, and I was wondering for for some of these projects, do you usually look at mural experience um, for something of this scope? Uh, good question. And first of all, I realized like um, there are about a dozen artists on the call. I didn't realize I click on the blue arrow and there you all are. So I, I, I apologize for not acknowledging you all. Um, um, in this particular um, situation, uh, we're trying the best we can uh, to um, encourage artists with a variety of level of skill sets to apply. Um, so for example, um, if, if you're an artist who's an accomplished visual artist, but you don't have mural experience, uh, we won't really be uh, evaluating, evaluating you strongly on that because mural arts is able to support artists 
who are good visual artists but might not have that experience we can provide you know we do provide project managers and we have uh, assistant artists or in some cases we have design artists and lead artists so i think the emphasis here will be on your um your visual art skills and on your the, the way you kind of give us a sense that you will connect with the project um and that brings us to the cover letter uh, which is where you really get to make your pitch for why you should be selected for the project. Um, these are the kinds of questions that would be important for us, for you to, um, to talk about. We'd like to know, you know why you're interested in this, what motivates you. Um, Mural Arts does place, a, and, and the Science Center uh, and all the partners in this project will place a very strong uh, emphasis on engaging with with stakeholders and it's a really interesting situation because we have stakeholders from the Science Center, we have employees, we have um, people who are um, uh, visiting, but we also have um, a couple of neighborhoods nearby and we consider them to be stakeholders for this project as well. Uh, understanding this is situated really in, in the broader West Philadelphia area. Um, we're interested in knowing how the ideas of scientific research and innovation um, uh, interest you. I think innovation is the key word here. I think we're very open to thinking about what that means, particularly in the context of West Philadelphia. Um, uh, so how, how does that, how is that something that interests you? Um, we expect the project will uh, be commissioned in the winter and will be on track to be uh, installed or work, you know, produced in the spring, installed in the summer, more or less. And so we want to make sure we that you have availability for that. So please let us know what your what your other obligations are and what, what conflicts there might be. In response to Lisa's question, um, uh, what help would you need from your arts to accomplish the project? Um, I mean, our, our philosophy and I think the philosophy of this whole team is um, if it's a strong artist, but the artist needs support in some way to complete the project, uh, we'd like to figure out how to do that. Um, to make this project as, as accessible as possible to, to a, wide, a wide range of artists. So you might say, I need help finding assistance, or I don't know the first thing about how to do something on a high wall, or gee, I, I really need help figuring out what paint brands to use or whatever. Wh whatever kind of help you think you need, just state it. Um, it's, it's not something that would um, adversely impact our um, evaluation but it would help us understand how we would work with you in the future um i'll stop again for the dozen or so artists who are on the on the call do you have any any questions about that letter or anything else i've talked about so far hey todd this is linda i have a question about it linda, says welcome you said you weren't going to be here yeah i'm gonna I'm be glad here you i'm glad you made it <laughs> Yes, it said that only one artist will be selected, but can a collective apply? Sure. Okay. Yep. Um, I don't see any other hands. Uh, are there other questions? Okay, let's go on to the next slide. And don't forget this, uh, the application checklist. Um, this is um, this is what makes my life and Lindsay's life a little bit better when we can find your name and address and phone number and email and figure out how to get in touch with you when we uh, need to. Um, it also helps you because there's a list of things there that you have to provide so you can check against that to make sure you've provided us with all the information. So um, please make sure you, you include this uh, filled out checklist. Uh, next slide. Um, now, um, here's the email I, I mentioned uh, a few minutes ago. Um, um, this is where you can email us to get information, or if you don't have the RFQ yet and can't find it on the Mural Arts webpage, uh, you can email this email address uh, and um, I will get it to you. It's ucitysquare at muralarts.org. Now, um, we are interested in accepting digital submissions, so you can transmit them to us in a number of ways. 
uh, by email, by Dropbox, uh, by WeTransfer. Um, it occurs to me there might be other um, platforms or processes people uh, are comfortable using. And so I just thought I'd ask um, uh, if anyone has a question about a platform. And I see Linda, is your hand still up from your last question or do you have a new question? It was just up for the last question. Okay. Um, does anyone have a question about how to get your submission to us? Okay, well. Uh, sorry, Todd, uh, this yeah. isn't specifically for that, but uh, we did have a question from David in the chat. He asks, uh, is it possible for an organization to apply with an artist like mine, Al Bustan, Seeds of Culture? Um, I think David, um, I would either ask you now to tell us a little more about what you're thinking, or if you'd feel more comfortable, we could have a one-on-one -on -one conversation about that. Yeah, sorry, I'm, I have my young boys with me at the moment, so I can't uh, be on the audio too much, but maybe I'll just email you or, and talk later. Yeah, email and we'll set up a time to talk, okay? We'll help, we'll help you through that question. Um, thanks for flagging that, Jake. Um, I'm not yet facile with all aspects of Zoom. Are there any other questions we? Um... Uh, no, none in the chat. OK, well, I'll be on to the end of the meeting. We'll have questions afterwards. There's an email right there for you. So thanks, everyone, for your interest. It's great to see everyone here. And um, well, I guess uh, we'll go on to Lindsay to talk about how the project will move on from here on out. Hi, good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Lindsay, and I will ultimately be the project manager on this project. So once an artist is selected, they will work uh, with me as well as with all the partner agencies. Um, this timeline is outlined also in the RFP, but I just wanted to put it in here to go over. Um, I, I like do everything in full disclosure. Obviously, the world is in flux right now, so I will put this out there and we will hope for the best. Um, but this is the plan of what we um, hope to execute for the process. So you can see it's relatively short. Um, the hope is that the artist will be selected and contracted within the month of January. Um, it will go through um, a vetting process with our partner agencies. We'll review everything and then we'll reach out. Um, the design process, which will include artist-led engagement activities within the community, um, will take place in February and March. Um, depending on the state of the world, it will be done virtually. Um, that's most likely the way it will be at this point. Um, and I will be the person helping to move that process along. Um, design approval will be multifaceted, both within Mural Arts, along with the partner groups and community stakeholders that need to be at the table. Um, and then in May and June, we will have installation. In early May, um, it is one of the hopes is that we will work with uh, a local school um, obviously schools are not in session right now. So again, there's a few variables that may change, um, but we are hoping that we will be have, able to have some community participation in painting of this mural. Um, and as I am managing other projects, we have some creative ways to be able to do that. And we're also open to other creative ideas once we have an artist on board. Um, but I think it's important to emphasize that this is a community driven project, um, both in the design process as well as in the actual creation of the project. And the hope will be that it'll be installed sometime at the end of May and June, and we will dedicate it in June, um, hoping the world will be a much happier place at that time anyway. So um, I don't know if anybody has any questions. You know, I think Todd alluded a little bit to the fact, um, I'm sorry, I can't remember if it was Lisa who asked the question in terms of if an artist comes to the table um, with not as much mural experience, once, once we have chosen an artist, um, we will figure out what that team needs to look like to support and then how the uh, engagement activities will transpire um, accordingly. So um, it's a little bit like we'll start creating it once we know what all the ingredients will be, um, but this is a good format to understand how we plan on doing it. So um, I think that I think that that is it. Um, uh, I guess this is a good time to open it up to questions um, for either one of us, either, you know, kind of all have our, our overlaps with each other, but um, we're happy to answer questions. However, people want to raise their hand or put it in chat, whatever is easiest. I also have another question. 
Um, are materials strictly paint? Because you're talking about, you know, science and innovation. If there's another material um, that might be added to it, um, I guess I guess my question is, yeah, is it open to other materials besides just like a painted mural? Um, Todd, do you want to answer that question? You're on mute. Nope, there we go. This is game people play with me on Zoom. How long will Todd realize <laughs> he's talking? <laughs> happens every meeting. Um, that's a super good question. Um, I, I, in our conversations with the owner of the building, there's openness to considering other materials. I think it has to be considered on a case-by-case -case basis. They have um, expressed an interest in the possibility of uh, like a poly tab or parachute cloth to facilitate the community painting. So um, all, all I can say right now is, is that there's openness to considering other materials. Um, uh, we would just have to see what those are. We have a question in the chat. When is, um, the, deadline? When is the deadline for the application? Good question. It is uh, December 31st. Okay. Emmanuel, did you have a question? I saw your hand up before. We can't hear you, even though you're not muted. Yep. <laughs> Maybe you could type your question in the chat. Wow. We can also come back to you. I have a question. Um, if applying in a collaborative team of two artists, would each artist supply five images um, or would you prefer to see a total of 10 per equaling 20? Uh, um, so, I, I guess, you know, I, I would say, I would say up to 10 for each. Don't worry about that. Yeah, don't, don't feel you have to sell yourself short and sell it showing us your portfolio just because you're collaborating with someone. Thank however, you. However, I do think that if there are collaborations between the two of you, those would be good to add as well. Um, so if you already have established collaborations to highlight those. Yeah, and I think, um, if you are proposing to collaborate, it's very good in your letter of introduction to explain what the basis of your collaboration is. You know, if, if there's any differentiation in your roles or, you know, what, let us know how you intend to work together. Got it, thank you. And I have to say, unfortunately, the fee for collaborating artists or team is the same as the fee for one artist. <laughs> Okay, Emmanuel's question is in the chat. I may have missed info about the digital mural. Am I correct in remembering there are two murals needed, one painted and one digital? Um, you, are, you are correct in the sense that um, the, uh, the mural arts and the Science Center and Wexford and all the partners will be commissioning a um, digital mural elsewhere in the Science Center. Uh, the selection process is going to be separate from this one, and it's going to be different from this one. Um, it, at the moment, we're anticipating that will be an invitational curated process to find the artist to do that. Um, so um, that and that RFP has not been finalized or sent out yet to any of the artists who, who we'd like to consider. We know the budget. Uh, we have um, advertised this work. Uh, we have the artist fee um, uh, established at um, $25,000. That is for the artist services in designing, painting, community engagement, and so forth. Um, the budget for the rest of the project uh, in which, you know, in terms of paint, um, scaffold, 
um, instant edibles. Um, we also have an additional budget for that. And it's typical uh, for mural arts to, to manage that part of the project. Uh, so at this point, we're not really advertising what that is um, because we, you know, we feel we've, we pretty much have an adequate budget for doing that part of the work. Uh, so it is not, it won't be the artist's responsibility to manage those funds. It's just your job to do the, the production. Now, there was a question about um, alternative mater materials. And I, and I think if there were an artist who wanted to work with other materials um, and that had some kind of impact on the, on the funds we have avail available to produce the mural, then we would just discuss that with the artist after you know, they were selected and develop their, their concept. Lindsay, do you have anything you'd like to say about the budget? Um, no, I, I did note that in the RFP, it states that the 25,000 included includes assistance. Yes. So, um, I think that's important. Um, so if you end up becoming a team of three or four, then it will have to be distributed. Um, if you're a collective, again, you'll have to figure that part out. If you have assistance that you will need, but you do not have people to work with you, we can identify people for you, but it would also be part of that um, budget. You wanna do the whole thing by yourself? Then you get the whole thing. <laughs> Nico, yeah. Hi, I had two questions. Um, the first one was um, if multiple finalists will be chosen through this um, final process. Um, Um, at the moment, we're not anticipating to do that. Um, the reason for that is um, we think that the community engagement process will be important to the artist being able to develop a concept that will work for the site. And mm -hmm. so we don't want to have an artist preconceive of what they're going to do. At that stage, we'd rather give them the time and the ability to engage with us all and the stakeholders to, to develop their work. So we don't anticipate having uh, well, I, I'm, I'm mistaken. We will have a short list who will be interviewed. Okay. I'm sorry. So we will we will have a short list, potentially three artists who we will interview, but we won't ask you to produce concepts. And this kind of leads into my second question, which is as far as the production timeline for the actual mural, is that limited to just the months that are listed in the RFQ? Or, but it sounds like if you're choosing an artist earlier on that as we develop the ideas with the community, then we would have time to work on select parts of the mural. I'll let Lindsay tackle that. Nico, I will say, I'm sorry, I had like a distraction go by me. Would you repeat that last part of the question again? Yeah, it was about the um, production timeline um, on the RFQ. It says that the approval is in April. And right. that installation is through May and June, but as yeah. far as it sounds like the artist would be chosen early enough that they'd be able to work with the community and stakeholders to develop the ideas. But I was just wondering if there was like a way that you could work on production before those dates listed, or if it was strictly only within uh, May and June. I mean, you know, if, if things move quicker, uh, and we're able to move, nothing is moving quick right now in the world of public art project, man you know, the world yeah. is not moving. So <laughs> to say things will go faster is uh, hard to believe, but I, I, you know, anything can happen in 2021. Um, so yes, I think, I think these are, these are guidelines so that we all have an idea that you're not looking at executing this in 2023. Um, however, depending on how the process moves along, um, provided that we don't cut corners in any of the places of community engagement, which is really important to the stakeholders in the community, um, you know, where there is flexibility. And if Thank it can push back also, if things happen and it has to get pushed back, that's also understandable. Yeah. And sometimes um, there's like preliminary stages of production, like priming the wall and so forth. Yeah. That can occur while other things are happening. Thank you. We had another question in the chat. Um, 
You said something about working with the neighborhood community like schools. Can you explain more? You want to flip, Lindsay? <laughs> um, well, actually, Lindsay, you're probably better, or even maybe Angela, I don't know, on, on, on the schools. Um, but in, in general, um, so. I don't think it has to be schools. No. It just has to be community engagement. Um, both. Um, most of this, most of the people have come together to form the team that is organizing this project. The Science Center, Wexford, Mural Arts, have um, genuinely worked in the past to engage people in in the neighborhoods adjacent to the Science Center. You know, that's a euphemism for places like Mantuism and Palton Village and Belmont and those neighborhoods. Um, so we actually have um, a PEC, People's Emergency Center. CDC is one of the partners in this project, uh, Lola 38, they all have roots in the neighborhood. And so when we talk about working with the neighborhood, um, we mean working through those channels uh, with those relationships, uh, you know, to connect with, with people uh, um, about this project, as well as the people who are stakeholders at the Science Center in the building where the work, where the wall, where the, where the mural will be. Uh-oh. Did we lose him? Oh, he might have dropped out. Well, I also wanted to add that um, we have at the Science Center lots of different spaces and resources to host um, community engagement, like Venture Cafe, Quorum, the art program. So there's a lot of assistance that you'll have as well to execute that. It uh, looks like we had another question in the chat from Scott. He said, uh, could you say more about the concept formation? Who will be involved in the decision making? Um, Scott, are you referring to the design or are you, the, like approval of the design? Yes. Okay. So um, Angela and the team of people we've been working with, um, there's a small cohort of maybe seven of us, I think about roughly um, that will be there I will be the person helping shepherd the process along um, in terms of you know, providing support after the engagement um, and setting time to review it within you know, myself, Mural Arts. Um, Mural Arts has its own design review process as well um, that is um, led by a team of artists and curators as well. So there's a two part process, but Angela and the team we're working with also is very, um, very well versed. Sometimes we work with communities that they don't they don't have as much understanding of kind of the nuances of art. This is not the case here. Um, so uh, ultimately, you you the artist will be the person coming up with the concept and the design, and then we will just keep kind of going back and forth in the process. Um, but we're hoping that you will be able to take the information from the community and share with us first. Um, I don't think there is an overwhelming thematic idea that we have ultimately we're looking for guidance is that fair to say angela that, okay definitely very helpful and that's not due at the end of december it's just the application at this point we want nothing but how qualified you are to do this job we're not asking for design concepts again like what todd said it is sometimes we do ask for design concepts but because the community is an important part of this process to do that would take away that community process and negate the purpose of it so we don't want to do that. Any other questions? I think we lost Todd permanently. <laughs> yeah, it looks like it. Vortex. <laughs> He's talking on mute to himself. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. He may be right. He may be <laughs> um, I don't, what, what say you, Angela, in terms of, oh, wait, I saw on, I saw on the proposal, oh, it will be available, yes, yes, we will have a link available to both Venture Cafe as well as we will host it on uh, someplace with mural arts as well. And I'll also share a link to Innovation Plaza in case anyone wants to check that out and see what it's all about. Uh, 
On the proposal, there are two murals. Oh, yes. Um, that was what was discussed uh, previously. So there are two separate projects that are happening um, that we're doing at the same time. Um, this is the, the other one was a digital one that I think was spoken to, uh, I guess it was Emmanuel brought it up, um, that is not listed on, on this proposal. Um, that, um, that RFP has yet to go out, in fact. Um, so this is the only one that has landed. There's Todd, I saw him for a minute. <laughs> How long were you talking before you realized we weren't listening? <laughs> Still not really there. You're, you're there. Can you hear us? You're on mute. My modem blipped. Oh. <laughs> there having you and I got kicked off. I had to like go back in and register all the questions. My email address is already recognized. I'd like register someone else or something. So, so one of the other um, Venture Cafe sessions that's happening right now, the presenters are together in a space and the fire alarm's going off in the space. Oh, no. so <laughs> there's clearly some gremlins happening um, in yeah. the ethernet right now. So I'm sorry. Did you finish my answer, Lindsay? I did, probably not as eloquently, but I did, I tried. Um, I, uh, any other questions? I'm looking in the... Doesn't seem like it. All right, I guess I got here just in time. <laughs> um, so, so just kind of in summary, um, you have a couple of weeks to send in the information. There's multiple ways that you can send it in through WeChat or um, any of those Dropbox. Um, they will ultimately land with Todd and I, and we will prepare for um, uh, presentation in early January. So um, you will hear from us. If you have any questions in the interim, you're welcome to send a note to that email and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Um, we'd also like for you to share this with other people that this is relevant to. Um, we are looking forward to working with, um, you know, artists that we know, artists that we don't know, um, anything is anything is open. Like we said, we'll, we will work with qualified artists to partner them up if that's what's needed um, because we want to give opportunities here. This, um, right. this, this will be posted, uh, a link to it will be posted on the Mural Arts Artist Opportunity webpage when it's available. And if for some reason we get, you know, juicy questions we think everyone should know about, we'll also post them on the webpage as sort of addendum to the RF, RFQ. I think that's about it. One, Nico has a question. Yeah, I just had one more question for Angela real quick, if that's okay. Um, I was wondering if you could speak a little bit more to what you do at the Innovation Plaza. Um, um, sure, I don't actually do a lot at Innovation Plaza, but I do work at U City Square and I run the Esther Klein Gallery. We have an, an art gallery on our campus and we also have art throughout the different buildings which I help to curate. And then um, I also run like events at Venture Cafe. So we'll do artist talks. Um, right now we're doing weekly um, virtual studio tours. And tonight we're having a virtual first Thursday event where there's gonna be over 15 galleries presenting things um, and you can stop by different virtual tables. So that's at 6.30 and you can access it by going back um, to the Venture Cafe portal and it'll, it'll just be there, so. Yeah, I do a lot of different things. <laughs> we also have an artist residency program as well, um, bio art residency, where we put artists in a um, biotech laboratory to come up with creative projects. Hmm. So it's a lot of science focused art, um, you know, innovation, technology, stuff like that. So that's kind of what we're looking for for this project as well. Great. Thank you so much. Sure. And for anyone interested, um, I just threw a link in the chat for that uh, first Thursday event that Angela mentioned.